the selectmen's meeting of May 13th, 2019 has already been called to order. Uh, we had a non-public session earlier. Now we're into the televised public section of the meeting. Uh, first on the agenda is Mr. Ralph Murphy, who has uh, volunteered to serve on the HDC. That is correct. Welcome. You, you don't have to stand, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, as a just in case. Yeah, I think we're just Yeah, we got it too. Okay. So whenever I'll be, you like, I'll begin. We are in receipt of a letter from uh, Virginia. Virginia Morse, the chairman of the HTC. He is very excited that you're uh, willing to volunteer your time. You, were you on the uh, board prior to? Yes. You've been on the board in the past? Yes, as an alternate member and as a commission member. And I, uh, I think that the letter that I presented to the Board of Selectmen indicates that. Okay. Uh, in the past, when you served and your appointment was uh, signed off on, we never had you come in and discuss it with us. Uh, but we've implemented a new policy, kind of, so it gives us the opportunity to uh, meet and talk to the people who are basically representing our community on matters like pertaining to the HDC or Historic Commission or Conservation. So that's why we invited you in. Um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, how long you've been in town, your interests on serving on the HDC, and what you hope to accomplish? Or okay. And I've, um, I've prepared something, so if uh, it shouldn't be too lengthy, but members of the Board of Selectmen, good evening. First, I must say that it gives me great pleasure to be able to stand here at your board meeting. Some of you present have known me for several years and of my various involvements serving with or on town committees, etc. And there are a few that are aware of who I am, but not necessarily familiar with my past and current positions. Uh, and so for those, here's a summary of those positions. I became a Kingston resident in 2002 and wanted then to find ways to volunteer and to become active in this community. My first appointment was a committee member on our annual Kingston Days event, of which I was deeply involved. Along with serving on that committee, I was a member of the Kingston Recreation Committee and then became an alternate member and later moved into the position of HDC Commission member. Currently, I am a longtime eight year plus team member with the Kingston Citizens Corps as a volunteer with the police department and very active in that. I would uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity with your approval in my reappointment as a commission member on the HTC and again, again begin sharing my contribution or contributions to the community in this capacity. Thank you. Anybody got any questions for uh, Mr. Murphy? I, I commend you for doing a citizen corps. It's a thankless job, and the boss of it's kind of tough, but but it is. Yeah, we hear it's fair though. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to leave my boss out of it. Too. Thank but you. I appreciate for that. Com your commitment. Um, quite proud to be a member of the team. Ralph uh, does a great job for the uh, community. I've known him for a number of years to be a uh, good choice for that position. Okay, if nobody else has a, uh, anything, how about a motion on uh, Mr. Murphy's appointment? So moved. Second. 
Okay, all those in favor of appointing Mr. Ralph Murphy to a three-year term to expire on March 31st, 2022 to the Historic District Commission as a member, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? One. Welcome aboard. Thank you so very much. I, I, I immensely appreciate it. See you tomorrow night. <laughs> I, if that's the case, I will be. Uh, it's, do we meet up here? I don't know where they meet. HTC meets here. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Have a good evening to all of you. Take care, Ralph. Thank you. Mr. Bravo. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming in. I want to make sure Sue's ready. I, I, hate, we... to, I hate to stop ta start talking when she's not ready here. What's that? I say I always hate to start talking when she's not you ready. Ready for me? Ready anytime. Okay, good. All right. As you know, Pete Broderick, the health officer of the town of Kingston. Um, I originally was coming in for one issue. This is still sort of the issue. I had a complaint today about a yard and junk in the yard. Now, that's always a tough issue. Is it health? Is it code enforcement? Which way is it? And I was originally going to ask you how you wanted me to handle it. Coincidentally, shortly after that, Chief Briggs came in because he had a complaint about a failed system, a uh, septic system. So the two of us went out to both sites, and in talking about things, he explained that he's going to be doing the code enforcement in the town. So I guess I'm going to present to you a suggestion that he and I talked about, and that is that he and I work in tandem. Because a lot of times it's a real gray area, and a lot of times it's difficult to determine, is this a code enforcement or is this a health department? So he and I will get together and come up with, you know, which he thinks it is, Many of them will probably work together on them. And we just wanted to inform you or ask you if that's okay with you. Uh, we think it's a good solution because that'll save every time I have a yard issue that there's no cause, there's no, it's not, is it a junkyard? Is that really me? Is that code enforcement? Is that health? You know. So I'm really here to tell you that he and I came to an agreement, if you are on board with it, that we'll work together on these complaints and hopefully streamline it and not have to bother people so much meaning you people. Um, so what do you think? And any questions you have, be glad to answer them. Uh, well, Don is a member of the Board of Selectmen, and, and you're, as you're aware, code enforcement, because we don't have a right, uh, right. code enforcement officer at this time, although you've been tasked with that in the past uh, to do certain things for code enforcement. Well, I did that because at the time I was a board of selectmen, so I was wearing both hats, so there was never any issue as to what yep. I could do and not do. But now I'm not code enforcement, I'm just strictly health. And a lot of times, like I say, these are sometimes very fuzzy areas. So he and I would sit down and say, how do you, you know, what's the best way to handle this situation? And then we'd work together to solve the problem. Okay. I so that that that's fine it, it, is him uh, representing the board on code enforcement issues he should any member of the board should be able to work with any of our inspectors on anything right, right. Um, we did did pete we've taken a look at uh the health officers uh, job description oh okay and we've discussed it um, there are some things in there that the board is looking to change that we feel, uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to see it, no. um, but duties that uh, we feel fall within the purviews of the health, Board of Health. Um, 
why don't I, why don't we take you right down through it? Okay, the job summary administers and performs inspectional work and in the enforcement of federal, state, town, and public health laws, rules, codes, regulations, works under the broad supervision of the Board of Selectmen, performs duties independently, makes decisions based on technical judgment and outlined federal, state, local ordinance, laws, and regulations. Um, the list um, of essential duties, uh, I'll, I'll go right through them. Some of them are already in there. Uh, there's other ones that we've discussed that we, we think are appropriate to include in there, and here they are. Number one, make sanitary investigations as may be directed by the Board of Health or by the Director of the Divisions of Public Health Services in order to safeguard the public health, take appropriate action to prevent further pollution. Review and approve septic system designs prior to submission to New Hampshire DES. I believe you're already doing those. Uh, inspect installation of septic systems at bed bottom and prior to backfill to ensure that the system has been installed according to the approved design. The ones in red, I believe, are the additions. Uh, although, uh, number four, I, I think you already do this. Review and approve sites for the placement of wells. You're already doing that, right? Uh, number five, and this was one of the new ones, takes direct responsibility for overall water quality in the town, including but not limited to acting as primary contact for state agencies and testing companies for monitoring and sampling of well water at town buildings and all designated public water supplies. I think up to this point, Rich has been involved with that. Yep. The board does feel that that certainly should fall under the purview of the health inspector yep. acting as primary contract for state agencies and testing companies when testing of private wells is required to see that results are shared with all involved parties and that any mitigation such as providing water bottled water or placing filters is provided i think what that that's part of what that talks about is the recent thing with the the fire department and the pfoas uh, we need the health officer to kind of spearhead that. Rich has been picking up the slack on that. Really it doesn't, you know, fall under his official jurisdiction. Um, so we're looking to incorporate that into your job description. Acting as primary contact for state agencies to monitor water quality at all town beaches to implement any EPA and New Hampshire DES directed restrictions on swimming or fishing at public recreation areas and to communicate restrictions to the public. I think you've been involved in that in the past, haven't you? With the beaches, closing of the beaches? Um, yeah, I usually, they, they usually contact me and then Rich has the, I just notify Rich and he posts them, but I can, you know, we can work that out. Okay. Well, I, I think we don't actually expect you to go down and post it. We can work with uh, the highway department if signage needs to be right. Put well, they, 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 we. I think you still have some signs. I think I've got some signs left. So we just, you know, we we have the signs. We get down. You know, he's he's got the hammers and the nails, so he goes down and does the physical nailing. Number six, review and report to the Board of Selectmen all environmental test results from the former town landfill. We, as you know, you're aware that we have a um, environmental company and our engineering company uh, as part of the maintenance on the closed landfill. There's uh, monitoring requirements uh, for you to be the point of contact on receiving those and um, reviewing them and letting us know uh, any action needs to be taken or just kind of review the results with us. I think in the past, Rich has, Rich has been getting those. Coordinate and report to Board of Selectmen on any air quality testing done in the town buildings. Uh, there has been issues in the past about, um, you know, possible mold issues or complaints of that nature. Again, the board feels that falls under the health department. Um, Rich has been 
where he's overseeing buildings and things of that nature. Um, he has been directly involved with that. We feel that the health officers should be directing testing and things of that nature. And then if something needs to be done in the building, um, making recommendations to us and then in turn uh, talking to Rich about implementing some of those things. Like I, I know in the past, and Cindy has spoken to me about it, that um, you know she, she's got a very uh, high sensitivity to uh, dust and potential mold and that stuff, and she's talked about changing out the carpet in her right. office. I know we have an air purification system in there, um, and I think that's something we probably should move forward on, but, and, and I know that the police department had a potential issue with the heating system, and I know Rich has been looking into that, um, but potential mold, um, the health officer should be really spearheading um, investigating that or, or, or making a recommendation on investigating it maybe through an outside company or whether it needs to be cleaned or things like that. And working in conjunction with Rich because he is responsible for buildings. Review demolition permits to ensure compliance with asbestos laws. I think you do that to a degree now uh, with Robert. Review applications to land use boards, planning boards, zoning board adjustments that involve well and septic systems and enter a written opinion to the record. Uh, I think you have done that in the past. I haven't the, done it to the planning board, but ZBA on like all ADUs. Yeah. Um, I, the planning board will actually send it. I, I think they maybe we don't return it to them, but I, we, we want to start doing that. If, if they requested something like that, I'll do it anyway. Well, I think they send it out and, and if, if you, if, the health department has no concerns. We should. Oh, that yes. Okay. We should note it and send it back to the planning board so right, they can read right. it in their record as no concerns received or right. something okay. like that. But on the ZBA, um, whenever there's an ADU, I always give a written report on it. Okay. Performs inspections of homes. Again, some of these are uh, that's, repetitive. That's, that's normal. Or you're already doing them. Uh, inspection of homes to be used as daycare centers or to provide foster care, perform inspection of preschool facilities for issuance of licenses to operate. Um, 11, ensures that food service, beauty parlors, and electrolysis licenses are operated okay. I have to never operate done. a current. I think that we, we know that um, you're not the inspector. The, the town falls under the um, state. state food uh, licensing and they do the actual inspections. I think this was uh, more for like Kingston days and um, questions we, we, we had about the water servicing some of those vendors. Well I guess I guess what I'm asking on the planes because this this had never I've never seen seen this um, and that's okay. Um, food service Kingston days that's a standard blanket. Uh, there's a law at 3 and 30 uh, it's, it's, but that's, I won't get into technology. But the beauty power and electronics, um, are you saying that you want me to go every year and make sure their license is current and go into the establishment and check I, it? I, was that something that was already on the books, right? Not that I, I know. that's mandated by the state. That one, that one was already on there. Yeah. I mean, the health officer specifically has been told that when it comes to restaurants in Kingston, the state will do it. Um, that was under the former health officer and, and under me. Yeah, they're, they're so I, don't, I don't inspect any restaurants. As far as electrolysis and beauty parlors and things, this is, uh, I mean, I, I can certainly go in and make sure they've got, they've got their current license, but I'm just saying, is this, this is new. If that's what you want me to do, I got no problem doing it. I just wanted to let you know that I've, we've never done it in the past. I think that was already on there, and I think probably a good thing would maybe reach out to the state and check with them on what their requirements are on those inspections. Okay. I think also there was a question of someone's um, water testing, a restaurant's water testing, if it was current. I think that all apply, falls into that. Just to make well, sure I don't, again, the central focus of the town. We do not do anything with restaurants. We have very specifically been told, the health, okay. health department, very specifically been told we don't we don't do anything if you get a copy of something right from the state of someone's water license isn't kept up to date not that i know of the state has always taken care of that they've never sent anything to me 
I thought there was a certain restaurant in town that wasn't doing water testing and you got notification for it. Well, it, it, it depends. It depends on the type of restaurant. It depends on how often they're open. You know, um, yeah, but if you get notice for it, I think you would follow up with the state. Oh, if I got a notice, that they, yes, it, it, there's one in town now that they send me because they hadn't sent the paperwork up to them, and then they send me and say, okay, we got it. But what I'm saying is if, if, if they, the state sends me something and says we don't have their well report, I don't go down to them and say the state hasn't got your well report. That's, that's between the state. Now, there so was what do you one, do with road and trash? No, uh, no, because the state is going to follow this. But I don't, I have not been charged. And, and in fact, we've been pretty much told not to inspect restaurants in, in, in any way. But take this for example. They opened a few years ago. They were remiss in sending reports to the state. The state sent me that they were remiss in sending these reports to us. And in the letter, it said, you know, you've got so many days to apply to us and, you know, and conform and what have you. Then when they got it, the state sent to me that, yes, now they're in compliance. But okay. I do not go down and investigate because the state's already done it. For Are they long. just CCing you on violations in town or, and they're taking the actions or what? Yes. In that case, the state has started it. The state has told them they're not in compliance and they need to be in compliance and they carbon copy to me. But I don't then say, oh, look, the state, they're, they're not in compliance with the state. I'm going to go down and, you know, it's almost like, and do what? They've already been notified by the state they're not in compliance. And if they don't fall in compliance in a certain time, they're going to lose their license with the state. You know, I don't, I don't know what, what I could do. You know. Keep the board's current on, on knowledge of that, I would think, you know, if it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we can do that. Instead of just taking it and if the state's CC... Well, you I believe, I believe a copy reason. is sent to the Board of Selectmen. I'm pretty sure a copy is sent. I think, I think this copy is sent. You know, my understanding that it was. Because usually it says Board of Selectmen Health Officer. You know. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Or? Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I have no problem taking care of it, you know, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, we just hadn't seen anything like that, so, I mean, yeah, you know, as long as we're aware of yeah. it. And, 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 and if I get something, and I'm not quite sure, I'll come and see you and say, how you want me to handle it? Like I was going to today, until he and I got together and came up with a solution, you know. Okay, 12, respond to complaints about sewer odor. The faulty sewage systems. Yep. 13, when required to do so, accompany state officials on inspections for asbestos, lead paint, faulty sewage systems, oil leaks, etc. Perform inspections of dwellings to determine fitness for human habitation. Condemns dilapidated housing when necessary. Act as a primary, and this is a new one, acts as a primary point of contact and liaison for the town for pest control efforts, mosquitoes, ticks, and other potential diseases. That, 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 you, you're talking mosquito control here? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking, I, um, sa not Sarah, um, yeah. Dragon mosquito, dragon mosquito. They, if they have, they'll, they'll notify us if, if they get a test positive for West Nile. They Nile. notify me on those anyway. Right, and, and then just to keep the communication out with the board as far as recommendations on what actions should be taken, I know in the past that we have, for instance, at uh, Magnuson Field, and I think um, uh, the ball fields down on right. the old yep. fairgrounds, yeah, yeah. we've we've gone down and, and had a uh, spraying done when, like in the fall. If well, the state there. also they check mosquitoes. They send me a report that you know they had a hit for West Nile virus, or they had a hit yep. for. And what know. areas keep us up to date on those? Well, I keep you up to date because you then probably have to make a decision. Do you want to do? Yep. And, and they and call and it we, spraying, but it's not spraying. And it's we baiting. also want to be able to publicize, you know, through yep. our selectmen's meetings or on the website that uh, these areas here have a positive hit. Yep. And you know, so when you're out at I, night, I take precautions the with yep. with repellent and long. Uh, Long pants, long shirt, long sleeve shirts, and things of that nature. 16, maintain files on all cases and inspections. 17, perform other related duties as required. Um, the only um, 
I don't want to call it concern, is that on the water testing, that is new to me. I'm probably going to, well, certainly I'll be sitting down with Rich, um, and I'm probably going to need some training. Um, you can you can get very technical with some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's talk to Rich first, um, because when you do the, Rich, if I can, when you do the water testing, you bring the stuff, or one of your people bring the stuff up to Concord. Um, I don't know how you're going to, I mean, we'll work it out, but, yep. you know. You, I mean, um, you, you, you're you going to need to develop a rapport with, with the state and no, I, on I, this PO4A thing, that. with the state and also our engineer that's doing the testing. Uh, Rich has been kind of spearheading that, but. It, it, well, when, when he, we do testing like at the beaches and the, and the PFOAs and things, um, I don't know if you want me to carry it up there, if you want to have. I think you usually have one of your guys carry it up, but we'll, we'll work that out. Okay. Not worry about it. But as far as some of this, I can see it's a little bit more technical for the training. It's not difficult. I mean, I know what you're talking about. I did some of this many, 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 many years ago, so I'm going to probably need a little brushing up on some of it. Um, but I'll, we'll work that out with Rich. I'll report back to you if I have any concerns. Okay. Did I miss anything? Do you need to add anything? Discussion. The only thing um, I don't know if you saw the when the EPA was here at the last meeting um, about the barrel factory. I ha I got a I got a well yeah I didn't see it but go ahead. They're out there now um, yep. doing yep. testing for PFOAs in that area. Yep. And um, so again, just in that vein, you know, you would be our primary point of contact with the state. Um, you know, and, and just let. Because the concern is that, that leaching off into Country Pond and causing, you know, yeah. swimming restrictions or fishing restrictions, which there already are some right now. So that's just one that just came up recently where we would, you know, you would be the point, point man on that, you know, with the state. You might um, get a recommendation that, that you know, restricting uh, swimming and, and then we'd have to talk about how we get that information out and, and post in the beaches and notifying the community of Newton because well know. we do that already I mean the state notifies me and um, in fact I just got one that we one of our beaches is one of the cleanest beaches in our uh, uh, ponds rather uh, the best in the in the state but when I get those rather than go to you I always just went to rich and said Greenwood's got uh, cyanobacteria and okay and we'll go down and we'll post it and then the state will I talk to them all the time on those. I know who to contact. Okay. But they'll, we need uh, to get, they'll call me later on and say, okay, you can lift the band. We, we need to be kept in, a, in the loop. Yeah, that yeah. Well, I, so that we can, yeah. We can uh, release that information to the public so they're aware of it. Well, usually we say, again, I, not that this is new, that's something I kind of automatically did as my job. I notify Rich, we put him on, I talked to Susan, she'd put it on the website. You know, and I really didn't bother you with it, but I can send you a note or have Susan send something to you. That's so I'd make a problem. recommendation that we look at changing number five, A, B, and C, where it says state agencies to include state slash federal agencies under A, B, and C as the main point of contact yeah. in the, in the uh, federal. Yeah, I would agree with that statement. Yeah. Second. Now, testing of private wells, that is something new. Um, we, we test when we have a concern because of public involvement or possible public contamination. But I do get calls and people want the town to have their wells tested. And of course, the wells are private. Um, so I do have a list of companies that will do that. But we don't get involved with the town paying See, for or getting involved with doing private wells. And what I'm the, assuming which, you mean here if it's like PFOAs that they're concerned about, where the town should get, in, I'm going to say should get involved. I don't know how come yeah. and why, but yeah, yeah. That's what, what, we, Rich would, is, we would do that. It's yeah. more like when Stantec comes to us and says, hey, that guy over there suddenly has Yeah, Rich and I actually went next door, and Rich, again, because he did all the others. A, a lot of this stuff man. that Rich has been taking care of. Yep, yep. Um, they're going to come on really are uh, your responsibilities yep. and so we're trying to yep. compartmentalize yep. them into where they should be yeah it makes sense okay um as far as uh, a note on that people on um on uh testing of private wells yeah 
they can, everybody can, anybody who wants to get well tested, they can get a kit from the state and send it and bring it up or mail it to the state lab. There is a fee associated with it, yep. but the state lab will, will test it for a number of different uh, chemicals and compounds and bacteria. And so that, that's another avenue as opposed to actually hiring a company to come out draw the water sample and, and, and test it. And again, it depends on what they want to test for. Yeah. You know, those, well, those, tests, can... are, those tests are nice off-the-shelf tests. Um, I'm not sure if they check specifically for E. coli. Um, yeah, they do. But the they'll, they'll, do, they'll do a coliform because coliform is an indicator of E. coli yeah, is there. No, they, e. coli they, is very expensive to check for. No, when you but, do so a they water check... test with the state, it will have both listed. I, okay, I thought they just did the coliform because that's an indicator you've got E. coli. Because... Right, no, they, they'll test okay. right on the, uh, it's on the same report. Yes, I understand that. It's just, it's, well, anyway, okay. Anything else? No, I just said, I, I would think we'd make that recommendation to state the federal agency. Okay. All right. Did you have anything anything for us, Pete? No, no. This was just uh, one thing started and then it morphed into he and I. So you don't have a problem with he and I working together and trying to figure out the best way to no, solve I, the problem. Absolutely. Right. And that way he also. Don has been right good on. enough to uh, kind of volunteer. I guess that's a nice way. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's all. It's been a problem. I mean, we were able to do it when I was on the board because I had both hats. But once it was separated, you know, so I think this will work out. If there's any problems, I never did like him, but I'll work with you guys. <laughs> do we need a move to form the adoptee? So do you want to wait another week and let him digest it? or? Do we um, to... Yeah, why don't we have Susan make the changes and then we can formally adopt him next week. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. Look at that, we're almost on time too. Seven thirty, uh Mary see it? How you doing, Mary? Come on up. Thank you. Thank you for putting me on the agenda. I'm here tonight to talk to you about um getting the estimated tax impact for the budget in all special warrant articles uh, that carry a tax impact um, on the warrant. And um, as you're aware, the municipality and the school district are both governed by the um, state budget law, RSA 32. And in section 5-A, there was a phrase in there that said that all votes of the governing body relative to budget items or any warrant articles shall be recorded votes and the numerical tally of any such vote shall be printed in the town school district or village district warrant next to the affected warrant article uh, back in 2009 the town of newton passed a citizens petition uh, article 25 to get um, the numerical tally of recommendations for and against for their board of selectmen by a vote of 575 to 254. In 2014, the SAU did the same by passing Article 5 with a vote of uh, 1,314 to 208 against. And in 2017, Kingston did the same um, by passing Article 22, again, a citizen's petition with a vote of uh, 575 to 335. Now, uh, another subsection of that municipal budget law, uh, 32-5-B, um, talks about any town may vote to require that the annual budget and all special warrant articles having a tax impact as determined by the governing body shall contain a notation stating the estimated tax impact of the article. The determination of the estimated tax impact shall be subject to approval by the governing body. And to lend the same kind of history, in 2011, the town of Newton passed a warrant article, a citizen's petition, and it was the practice was, was implemented beginning with the Newton's 2013 warrant. 
In 2014, the SAU also passed a citizen's petition, Article 6, to do the same. So they got the estimated tax impact of any monetary item, whether it was the budget or special warrant article, um, to reflect an estimated tax impact. And that was by a vote of 1,085 to 449. So it's been overwhelmingly supported by the, the um, electorate. Um, the only missing component piece is the town of Kingston, as far as a community is concerned. Because when we go to the ballot in March, we have two components on the warrant. We have the school district warrant, which shows both the votes for and against um, for the municipality and the school budget, but only shows the tax impact on the school warrant items. Um, currently, the town of Kingston uses qualifying language on our warrants, such as um, no amount to be raised by taxation, as they did with Article 13 this past March when talking about the lot line adjustment for the fire department. So they're implying that there's consideration for tax impact by saying there will be no tax impact. Um, they also talk about when a part-time position is um, being proposed to become a full-time position, they'll say something like, uh, this amount will become part of the operating budget in ensuing years. So there is intimation about the impact on, on the budget. Um, in the name of full disclosure, and for the sake of improved voter education and consistency and content for municipal and school warrants for Kingston voters, I respectfully request that the Board of Selectmen deliberate the matter as you deem necessary and advise of your willingness and or ability to adopt the practice of publishing the estimated tax impact for the town's annual budget and all special warrant articles having a tax impact. Um, it's interesting because in um, Section 5-A, there's a little bit of a, an afterthought that says, unless the legislative body has voted otherwise, if a town or school district has not voted to require such tallies to be printed, and this is on the support or against, um, they can say that the governing body on its own initiative can require that the tallies be printed next to the affected article. So when it comes to putting your votes as a body in support or against a warrant article. You guys can initiate that on your own. But when it comes to the 325-B, there is no qualifier specified, at least at the section of the, the municipal budget law that I was looking at, that said you guys can initiate it on your own. So I'm coming to you today to ask, is that something that you are willing or able to do as a body, a governing body? And if it is not, just let me know and I will proceed with putting forth a citizen's petition so that the voters of Kingston will have the same kind of information, be fully informed not only about whether their elected officials are in support of proposed amendments and budgets, but also what the tax impact will be both for the school district and for the town. So I is this something that has to be voted on, or if we want to do it on our own, we could automatically do it? Well, that's what I'm coming to you for. When I looked at the tax, uh, the, the budget law, when it comes to the tallies, like three against, you know, yeah. two, two in favor, so it is supported by the Board of Selectmen. It only says that this, the governing body can do that for the tallies. They can go ahead and initiate it on its own. There is no qualifying stipulation on the RSA 325-B that I saw that said you can initiate it on your own. So I'm coming to you to say, what is the interpretation of that? And if it's something that you cannot initiate on your own, just let me know and I will put forth a citizen's petition. I'll get it rolling so that we can get it all in line, with, you know, wording correctly for DRA and all that kind of stuff. I think that would be a good question for NHMA. Yeah. Well, or DRA. Or DRA, yeah. DRA would be the one. Yeah. Go ahead, Phil. what I could find. You know, this came up at the planning board meeting the other night. It was a it's not in this it's in the same vein as by statute we're only allowed to have the tally from the select board and the budget, budget committee. committee. So the planning board can't actually show if it was three to five or whatever the, the tally was. And I am in favor of, of having this information on there, absolutely, but I think in order to cross our I's and dot our T's, um, 
you know, it should go to a warrant article, I feel, you know, so it's actually written in there. Because the concern I have with this on its own, with us just doing it, is it does open it up to be skewered in certain ways. People can do the estimates, you know, as those numbers can kind of be played with is the but, concern. But it would have. likely be fall on the to the responsibility of whoever it is that prepares and, and your paperwork with DRA. Is that the treasurer? Is that I mean I know that you know for the school uh, the, district it's, it's the business entry. administrator. In the town of Newton they've got a I think they have a town manager that does it. Um, so it's actually you know printed on the warrant and it's something that you guys confirm and approve before it goes you know to the ballot in March. I guess my point is that I, w I would want a set procedure in place rather than us just implementing this from Yeah, scratch. and I will tell you historically when I looked it up, it's all been by citizens petition. All the ones in Newton and in the district, both for the, the tally count and in Newton and for the district as far as um, getting the estimated tax impact. It's all been from citizens petition. So I just wanted to come before you to let you know my intentions, and if it's something you're willing to, willing and able to embrace and adopt, great. And if not, just let me know, and I'll proceed. Uh, I can tell you that in the past, uh, the, the budget committee, or members, a few members of the budget committee came to the board a few years ago, and it was within our purview to adopt. What they were looking for was the actual vote count on specific, um, you know, on, on the budget and on petition articles. We passed that in 2017. They wanted, they wanted that called out. Um, some members of the budget committee approached the Board of Selectmen and said, look, it's, you know, it's within your purview, we'd like that. At the time, we discussed it. It wasn't a unanimous thing with the budget committee. So the Board of Selectmen opted and said, look, yes, we recognize it's within our purview. Um, but on things like that, we'd like to leave it up to the people instead okay. of just putting that in. And that's, that's what happened in, at that instance. And a petition article went in and the voters overwhelmingly yep. supported putting it on there. I, my personal reading of this is yes, we probably do have the authority to include that in. Um, but my recommendation would be in usually is to leave it up to the voter uh, through the form of a petition warrant article. I, and I think what she's asking is that's fine, but she would like to know if the selectmen want to put it in as a selectman's recommendation versus her have to go get the signatures. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, after that discussion at the planning board, it was my intention to do a tally for the, the planning board as a selectman's warrant article, or at least to bring it up to the board, and I would be fully supportive of it being a selections article for this as well. I would too. You're talking about the tally, meaning how you vote as a board in support or against something yes. for the planning board? Yeah. Okay. But I'd also be in support of what you're proposing as well. I, I think that's the problem right now is a lot of people say that they don't understand, fully understand the articles. As people didn't written. understand the whole rooster thing and that's been talked about for months. <laughs> you know, it's like... Well, some of that was willful ignorance too, but... Um, you know, I think whatever we can do to get information to the people and they can at Absolutely. least see Give how people informed. are voting and, and what the impacts are right. going to be, every bit of information is helpful to them. So I'm in support of it. So I'm getting mixed messages. You're saying a citizen's petition is probably the most uh, logical way to go. And the most. It, it sounds like that's how all those things have been handled in the past. Been. But and, Mr. Coombs is saying he would support it. And that's fine. As far as, I mean, we can see how the rest of the board want, wants to go. I mean, that's certainly his opinion as well as Kevin's. Uh, if I, I guess that's, you know, you could do a number of things. You could do a petition warrant article and look for the selectmen to vote in favor of recommending it. Or one way to do it would be if the uh, selectmen actually put a petition warrant article in, I, I guess, I guess if I was going to put a petition warrant article in because um, I felt in favor of it, I probably wouldn't even bother with a petition warrant article. I, I would just say let's let's just implement it. Um, but 
My personal preference would be a citizen's petition. It, it shows a number of things. It shows that there's wide support to put this article forward as opposed to just the selectmen putting it in. And that possibly could be some of the reason that it has passed overwhelmingly on these other things. I, because that's what you did in Newton, that's what you did for the school district in both communities, right? I didn't do it, no. Well, somebody did. Somebody did. I, I'd be curious what the other two selectmen's opinion is, but when you talk about a wide view, 36 citizens of the town of Kingston doesn't make a wide view. It's just a, it's a tedious task. Is what it really well, I, I think it takes the pressure off you as a governing board to have it come from the citizenry to put forth as something, even if you were to put it forth as a as a Board of Selectmen sponsored article. Uh, it kind of implies intent, so I get that. And my question is, do you need to deliberate it at a later date? Is it something you're willing to discuss more fully this evening? Well, you know. well maybe we can get the Mr. Wilson and Mr. Briggs to uh, weigh in on the discussion. I'm interested what uh what either NHMA may say or DRA. Yeah. Okay. Rich? I have no problem with it being on the ballot. How it gets on there is another, you know, get an opinion from DRA or. Okay. So how about if we do this? How about if we table this for this evening and we'll see if we can get an opinion on whether or not we could actually adopt it without a petition warrant article? Yes. And even if you can adopt it with a petition article, we know you can. The question is, are you willing and able to do it as a board, or would you like me to do it? And all I, all I ask is that you get back to me by July 1st so that I can put the ball in motion. I don't need an immediate answer. You don't need to deliberate it tonight. Um, we, we can certainly. But I will follow up. We can certainly get back to you, certainly within that time span. Can you give I, me I a, think it's probably something that we can get an opinion on relatively quickly. Okay. And so should I follow up with Susan for maybe an estimate, an estimated time frame for Well, for why, why don't we do this? Why don't we get the feedback from Susan, and then we can discuss it on, on how you want to move forward, and then we can, we can certainly let you know uh, at the meeting that we're going to discuss it. We'll, we'll, we'll give the uh, feedback. Okay. And, um, then make a decision on how we want to proceed. Thanks, but you're an ex in your expertise and your dealings with the DRA, what is a reasonable expectation for you to solicit feedback and, and uh, be able to I usually get a response deliberate. in a week. Yeah, the NHMA I can talk to within a day or two. Yeah, okay. we, certainly within a week. Very good. I'll be in touch if I don't hear from you. Okay, Thank thanks you. for coming in. Yep. Okay, at this point, uh, I'd like to open it up for public comment. Mr. St. Hilaire. Normally we allow three minutes, but since this is one of our department heads, <laughs> I would. Shouldn't take much more than three minutes. <laughs> What you've got in front of you is proposed uh, paving schedule roads I think I might be able to get done this year. Um, I want to get the uh, contractors in here, get numbers so we can, you know, basically put it out to bid. My question to you folks is, uh, usually I call four vendors, Pike Industries, Brock's Industries, Continental, and Bell and Flynn. So solicit bids from those four, and then we usually, all, almost all of us, use the lowest bid. Is that a process that's acceptable to the board? We're talking about over $400,000. You want to put it in the paper, it just takes longer. So, 
So the costs you're showing on there, that estimate. Those are all estimates, and actually the roads might change. It depends on what the uh, what the cost per ton is going to come in, or whatever the bid's going to be. So some of these roads might be stricken from the list, or we might actually get a road or two more. Okay. Most of these appear to be a lot of side streets. Yep. Um, our main infrastructure. Infrastructure roads, are they all in good condition? They're good enough to go another year, Mark. Um, we'll either have to do Hunt Road or Little River Road next year, but it, they'll both hold up till next year. Uh, and so the reason why I, over the years I've learned cost trying to save money to the town. These are all, this is basically set up so there's only three moves for the contractor. Every time the contractor moves from one road to the next and they have to use trailers, it's about a $15,000 cost. Gets worked into the numbers. You don't see it, but it gets worked. So you're trying there. to do it in geographic blocks? Geographic areas. We did that last year. We did it the year before, the year before that. Um, so some of the, there, are, there, are, there are roads in town that might be worse than these. But I've got to, you've got to get these, most of these, while the getting's good, while the equipment's there, get it done. Because okay. you can't afford to, that ten or $15,000 to move the equipment in for a road that only costs $12,000 to pave. Okay, some of these roads, um, are, they, are they part of the, we had a young lady in here not too long ago talking about roads. Are those on here or not? Those are not on here. Those must be next year. Because realistically, by the time we cut the trees, we still haven't gotten a release from a lawyer to allow me to go and cut trees. Okay. It's already I just, May. I just want to verify whether they're, because yeah. I think they're in those areas. Absolutely. We'll have to go okay. back and get those. It's about another thousand tons, but that's worth a, a move into that area to do it okay. next year if we can get things right. Questions for Rich? No, I went with Rich on this, and, and I think when we discussed it, the logistics of trying to get those roads done this year is, is yeah, not Yeah, I, I know there's a lot involved with it. I just didn't know, because I knew the geographic area, I wasn't sure the names of those yep. specific roads. I wanted to find out. A lot of trees and some telephone poles that have to be moved. I'm happy with Rich is calling the three biggies, the four biggies, and cool. four biggies and getting the best price. Okay. Do you want to call or do you want a formal letter or? Oh, I generally send them either a text or an email. I would hope he sends them this. And yep, this will be included, asking for a number on a specific date. They come in a sealed envelope, whether I open them or whether they have you guys open them. Okay. Do so you do a site lock or, or a site drive with them? Their estimator? Or? Every one of them sends an estimator. We go over each road, just like you and I did last week. Look at each road. They'll actually do their own measurements. Um, they might actually come up with different numbers. They are the professionals. I've only been doing it for 30 years. So you, when you send it out, do you just send out the list of streets? Or do you send them all this information? I send them this information. Yep. This is my estimate. It's an estimate only. I, I actually expect these numbers to be lower. The tonnage actually be lower when you we expect actually, these that you're submitting them to be lower. I expect to not spend this. This is this should be a high side. Okay. I, well, I guess well, maybe it's me. I don't know. I could erase the nut dollars. I, I think if I got a number like this and, and I could do the job for three fifty, I'd be telling you, yeah, four oh seven. <laughs> I, no, I can erase two calls. Have to, What's that? Few, three other contractors that compete against. Not a few bids so. against three other people, though. But is everybody comfortable with Rich just soliciting those four companies? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You got anything else? I'm here. Have anything else for Rich? Oh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for lighting my load earlier. Okay, anybody else on the public comment? No? Okay. Uh, how far is your... Where are we on the electricity supply proposal? I, I, 
I thought we were going to wait for Rockney and planning and decide because we already missed the cutoff for that other one, and then we could compare them side by side. Okay. When do we expect that to happen? I don't know. It, I would think by the June, July. because they were looking to implement a thought for September. And this guy's bid was, wasn't it November 1st or something? Because we missed the May date. All right, so we'll hold off on, uh, till we get that additional information? Yes? No? Yeah, we have till November, right? Yeah. Is that what you wanna do? Okay. I have a, <clears throat> I guess, an announcement from the Heritage Commission. Uh, let's see. Public service announcement. On Saturday, June 8th at 1 p.m., the Heritage Commission will be hosting a New Hampshire Humanities event entitled New Hampshire Cemeteries and Gravestones. New Hampshire historian Glenn Knobloch will lead an interesting and informative tour through the historic Plains Cemetery to talk about the variety of gravestones in the cemetery, their symbolism, and some of the stories they tell of each historic event, such as the throat distemperment, distemper epidemic and other events associated with the time period. This program, which is supported by the grant from New Hampshire Humanities, is free, and the public is encouraged to attend. After the tour, refreshments will be served in the Town Hall, in the Kingston Historical Museum, and the Historic Church on the Plains will be open for visitors. Any questions, you can call Ernie Landy directly at 603-702-0270. Or the June 1st, you said? June 8th. Uh, Ernie's... Ernie's email is ejlandry at aol.com. aol.com, I thought I was the only one with an email address. <laughs> Left. So it's Saturday, June 8th, 1 p.m. We want to take a look at, uh, did everybody have the opportunity to look at the records retention policy? So that's, that's for the review. Um, Tammy, uh, Jane, and I have been working on this. So um, some of the things we need to look at in the third uh, area were the minimum number of years and where kept. So the minimum numbers to the, to the left of that is what the state law requires. And if the town wants to adopt a policy or, or whatever to keep the longer than that records longer than that, then they would go in this particular area here. So what I would recommend that, that we review these, make any changes. This is a rough draft that we may want to kick these out to the department heads to let them have input before we come up with the final final draft. Okay. Anybody else? Sounds good. So appreciate well, the hard work <coughs> of the committee. So can we Susan, can you see that all the department heads get this um, <coughs> policy and, and ask them to take a look at it and see if they're, they have any uh, input on the things I, I would assume that uh, pertain to their departments directly. But they're certainly, will, they're certainly able to give input on, on all of it. Dragon Mosquito, 
We have a contract. Appeals. That's the one I asked you about. What's that? Oh. This is the actual contract. They have to, uh, I think they need this to put in their state application. Um, that, the, the one thing we've already signed in January, I think, has to do with, this, with the state. This is their contract with us. Okay. It's the same amount that it's been for several years. Did everybody, uh, did everybody get a copy? No? Would you like me to read it? I think it's pretty basic, isn't it? I mean, it didn't change from last year. It's the same. same as last year. So all, all of us supposed to sign it? Yes. There's provisions for filing us to sign. Talks about what they do, um, the surveillance, lava siding, and then there's a twenty-five hundred dollar uh, emergency adult sizing, like if we do the spraying of the fields if they have a positive hit. In the areas I know we've sprayed Magnusons in the past, we've sprayed Como in the past. Um, not every year, but just as, as needed. So does the remainder of that fund that isn't expended, that just goes back into the general fund? Yes. I think it's budgeted for 34. Is it 34? I thought it was like 45. No, I don't think it's 45. We just signed it, a PO was in there for 28, was it? 28,000? The total, uh, the total, uh, that's for the lava side and is 28 per season. So that's the spraying they do. Um, and then surveillance, actually uh, doing the traps. That's 3,600 for a total of 31.6. And then the reason it's the 34 is because the 2,500, if we have to do the emergency adult side and that's what that's for. And if we don't expend that, it goes back to the, to the general fund. How would you like to proceed? Make a motion to um, engage in a contract with Dragon Mosquito for the 2019 year. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No. Susan, you want to just witness for us? Okay. Application for property tax credit, veterans credit. It's for a disabled, disabled veteran. Total disability. We have all the pertinent documentation. Recommend that we sign it. It appears that all the uh, necessary documentation is enclosed. And what is it? 
13. Did you get that dragon to see open? It yeah, we gave it to her. Yeah. I've got it. She's got it all signed. Okay. We have a number of appointments for the building committee for the fire station. They're all expiring. They're all expiring. This would extend it for another year. Uh, how would the board like to proceed on these? I don't think we need to bring them in. Isn't there one new one? Gone. We got. Uh, William Sullivan, Rich St. Hilaire, no, Brian Gallant, Mark Furlong, Kent Walker, Jack Hart, Bill Bixby, Bill Seaman, Andrew Berridge. Uh, this one we might want to bring him in. Kevin St. James. What's the board's pleasure? Sorry. No make need for interviews. Make a motion to extend the current slate for uh, the stated period. Without bringing them in. What? For one year. You self dealing there? Yeah. If you're one of them, I don't think you should make that motion. I can make the motion whether I vote is a different story. Is somebody going to second that motion? I will second that motion. Discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor of uh, signing these uh, appointments, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I'll abstain. Cramp. I'm not going to be able to sign this last one, probably. It's still going to be the one that catches us up on that. There. What? What's that? Yeah. Phil, are you going to fill us in on the sport spotted turtles? They're lovely in suit. Well, who's the representative to our uh, Conservation Commission? Is that You're the man in red there? Mr. Wilson? Oh, is that you, Rich? Yeah. You're going to update us on the spotted turtle letter? Yeah, she wants to do that. She wants to let the state do that. Um, what? Okay. The question I had on that. The state's going to come down and set traps on to what, catch the turtles. turtles? Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I just think uh, maybe, uh, I, maybe it's me, but I think. Instead of giving permission without asking us, not that I would have said no, but it just seems um, overextension. All right. Would you would you like to uh, come in and discuss it with us? I don't think we. I just think maybe uh, I'll pass on to the representative to the. I can pass that on. That probably shouldn't be giving permission without letting us know first. This advisory, correct? I, I think we did have that discussion as far as reaching out to the state and without discussing this with, with us first. Okay, so it's not just me then. Okay. I, and I, I guess I would say to reiterate what the chairman just said is that we had this discussion before. The 
role as advisory. Okay, on this letter, uh, we're going to send this out certified. cease and desist but it's uh, it's to reiterate our position um, did some then on the approved site plan yeah, read his comments no I didn't looks great run it up the flagpole legally speaking oh, of course you, you have signed it well, I guess my question is, it's going to be very interesting that we send this based on the, I didn't see the letter that's in here from them. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that came today, right? Yeah. yeah. Did it, it, so it looks like we're going to be in for some um, legal raggling on the letter that we got. Certainly is a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Which one was that? We get a letter that he um, in your correspondence file. I think it was uh, this one here. I would ask that. Um, what are we doing with that? That's going to be sent certified, but also hand delivered, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So, correct me if I'm mistaken. Didn't we tell them when they were in here that that was? what they were supposed to follow? That's what I thought, but he's putting us on notice, apparently, that he is doing this. They tried to deliver that to the planning board this afternoon, and Ellen sent them down to us. She said she wouldn't accept it. Okay. I, I think his contention is that, that uh, he was told that they could do what the other uh, prior owners Did I, I think? Yeah, that's exactly what the site plan says. That's I, why they I, wasted two I, months on it and drew it all up. I think. I think. I think they may be under the misconception that prior owners, because they partook in certain activities, me uh, meant that that was an approved use. I, I think this is just in disingenuous because they already came before the planning board trying to get outdoor events approved. They knew it was not accepted. Well, so, they did make the comment, though, that, that other, the prior owners had done similar things. Well, even if the prior owners, and I was involved in that for many years, but even if the prior owners were involved in getting outside events, they were still required to go through a certain process to get the approval at a local level. It, all of that is negated because the site plan specifically excludes outdoor events. It doesn't matter if they had flying circuses there. You can't do it anymore. And they signed that and then they attempted to come before the planning board again last year to have outdoor events added to their site plan and then withdrew their application. So they are well aware of the fact that they cannot have outdoor events because they spent the time and the money to come before the planning board trying to do outdoor events. So uh, this is do just... They, do they have their actual own site plan approval or you're referring to a site plan approval from a previous... They have their own site plan approval for there. That's why there's the event parking there. That's why there's the restrictions okay. on where alcoholic beverages can be consumed. That's why there's no outdoor okay, events. So, so yeah, if, if There they, was that whole list, like the lighting that wasn't in compliance, the snow removal area that wasn't in compliance. There was a litany of issues that they weren't adhering to the site plan on. So it has nothing to do with what the prior owner did. Okay. There's, there's also, um, I received a call last week, the end of last week, where another group wants to come in and have 700 motorcycles there. Um, it's a group out of, uh, out of Lee, New Hampshire. So I, I mean, I think sending that letter, regardless of this, is, you know, it reiterates our position, and I guess the next step is going to be what happens well, I guess that's the decision this board's going to have to make is what action are we going to ask, whether it's the police department or not to do. I mean, 
what do we do if, if this event takes place the way we fear it's going to take place? Normally, normally you do a court injunction. That's normally what would happen. Sumner wasn't, he said you can't do anything until it happens. That's what I mean. So, but what the thing is, is once it happens, you, I think we ha it's in our authority to have it shut down. Depending, depending on what's going on, yeah, yeah, if it's a public, if it's a public safety issue, you can. Yep. But then also it becomes a manpower issue. When I mean, you get 700 motorcycles. Well, uh, I think that, that's a different event, isn't it? That second one is a different event, yeah. Okay, so. Um, I mean, if cars are parked outside of the parking area, if it's at night and there's no lighting, I mean, if there's more than what? 200 people there, parked there, they're going to be parking on 125 and all the way up North Street. So well, I don't think that'll be tolerated, parking on 125. Not supposed to. That, that's a clear self-safety issue. I, I feel that letter reiterates what we said. It leaves no ambiguity to it, and it's in writing. And it should probably be sent certified. In here. We all signed it, right? Yep. Susan has it? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, on the uh, cease and desist. Um, aware that I received a phone call from Mr. Conant and received a visit from him. Are you aware of that? Is the board aware of that? I, I wasn't aware that you received a visit. I did. On Friday, he came to, uh, to visit me as well. I received a phone call from uh, Robert Lefebvre as well, as well as, as well as Kerry Marshall. I don't know if you're aware of that as well. Okay, this is the cease and desist to be mailed, certified, and, and delivered? Yes. So Tom will, when he's feeling better, he'll come in? back from the uh, fire department, right? No. Well, take it, he was taking a day to think about it. Were they supposed to let us know today? Or tomorrow? I don't know. I was, he was thinking about it. Okay. That's what Bill said today. That It was discussed on Thursday, and he said he would let him know. Okay. What's this one? Oh. I'll make a motion to approve the... Um, minutes of May 6 public and the two non public as corrected. Is that non public in there uh, changed? I didn't see it. Did you um, change that non public? I have to look what you, I as an abstention. Sure you were referring to the abstention because I'm a, an abutter as we went into non public or out of no on the vote. Okay, I didn't know you'd seen the non public, so let me know. So I have a question on this on this uh, order to cease and desist only because of the phone call I received. Uh, Bob Lefebvre uh, indicated that he is the property owner, land owner of number uh, R6-14-6, that John Ingalls is not the landowner property owner 
Okay. Did you secure a address for him so we can notify him also? I have, a, I have a phone number for him. He's out of the country. So I'm just making you aware that he claims that he's the rightful owner. I think then we just, the letter can be sent to him as well, all, anyone, um, cease and desist on that, on that building until um, everything else is fixed. They can argue about who owns it, but either way, we don't want anything to happen. So if we got to CC someone else on it, that's fine. Did, did we search that deed, didn't we, to see if? Yeah, we, well, I looked at it again. It's basically all the lots. He started out with 12 acres. Lots have been sold except for that one. So yeah. that doesn't have its own deed. It's still part of the, the larger amount that was split up. And it's a little muddy because acreage was added from the side to the whole thing. So, um, but Carrie Marshall also did the title search and came up with the same conclusion. So, which is what they missed the angle zone the land. Yeah. Yeah. So Bob Lafave informed me that that side of the road he owned that property. That that piece was was his. And uh, that's going to be part of it. The court action, I believe. In Actually, it. if you look at the letter that we have in our thing, the second paragraph, she states that um, in, in this letter that her client retained ownership. Curry. But what his. They, that's their old matter. We're just putting a cease and desist on it. That's for them to decide who owns it, but we just don't so, want any more building activity on yeah, it. Yeah, but my point is, are we are we putting a cease and desist to the right to the right party? I think we could um, put it to all of them, and maybe even have uh, the pol police put and take this notice on the door. Could do that because actually, and then it was brought to my attention that a well and septic permit was issued to it. I was informed that by Bob Lafave. That yeah. needs to be rescinded and let him know. That there. was how that happened. I don't know. And so I think that was issued at the end of October. Oh. So I believe that was before okay. these issues. The controversy. I, yeah, I looked it up this morning or this afternoon. And so there's three permits out on that law: <laughs> foundation permit, septic, and well. Right, and, and I'm sure, in, in Pete's defense, he saw a foundation permit had been issued, so. I didn't talk to him about it, but I just think we need to be a little more diligent about that. Because that, that's part of phase two, and phase two was never bonded, so we got to make sure the right hand's talking to the left hand. Well, it's in. It's going to court next week, is what I was told. It's almost like they should have a weekly meeting, perhaps on a Thursday. Yeah. Eight thirty in the morning, yeah, sometime like, like that. Perhaps that would be good for him to discuss these matters in depth. Okay, I have a, <clears throat> here's a letter from Dennis uh, to us regarding the bond release. I thought these typically go through the planning board. I was wondering why this was in our file. Wondering why what? I was wondering why that was in our file, because yeah, it's, it's typically the planning board that does the bond releases. I thought well, it usually goes to them, and then the chairman board. usually yeah, signs they, off to I us. They send it to us. And right. then we give it to Cindy. And this had not been sent to the planning board. Okay. So should that wait until the planning board? Yeah, uh, yeah. Why don't you forward that to the planning board? So go back to this. We also notify the other alleged owner. Sure. I, I think that probably would be appropriate. And then put a copy of both on the house. Okay. So. I would just do an addendum sheet on that that says, as you are asserting the ownership of this property, here is the owner of record. We are ceasing you as a courtesy. So I guess pretty much what a courtesy copy is. Hmm. Might be a bit redundant. So that's going to LaFave and Pellegrino, or just LaFave? Don. Who does it go to besides Mr. Ingalls? Uh, Bob, Robert Lefebvre. Just him. Okay. Okay, and then we have a letter from K. 
carrying. We had a couple of notes. Uh, that uh, did you check your schedule, Kevin, to see if uh, Gordon Gainty would like to know if you're going to be. A I am free, but I mean, I don't know about March and all by my lonesome. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to work that day. No, Dave. Dave owns it. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody that else is available. Passed out. I'm sure the. Uh, Can we get clarification on this? Because as I was told by Jim Voss, there's going to be a reviewing yeah, stand in my trailer. Oh, did he? Yeah. And we were Dave expected Dave to be on that. I did look at the note again, and we were supposed to give an answer by June something. He knows his, his list. On the, uh, the, the application, the, the uh, date is June, but that's okay. I am free, but um, I know Mr. Wilson was doing that day. What? On the parade. I'm out of town. I'll be in Montana. Well, apparently, me and Mr. Coombs are uh, the only ones around. I thought I was riding a horse. <laughs> well, you probably could in the parade. Can you borrow a horse? <laughs> How about if I walk behind you with a shovel? There you go. It's a good roll for you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We also have the, uh, I guess this is the platings. Yeah, that was, that was an interesting that was reading. Emailed Ex parte out. complaint restraining order. What's that? I think that was emailed out the other day. Did I send that? Okay. I'm trying to remember what I did. It's quite the reading. It's correspondence. Yeah, I also. A letter. One more from Dennis. We're going to send that back, right? Devlin. What was the Devlin? Uh, so those are the people that came to see me today. So on Codnell Road, they purchased this property back in geez, I think they've been there seven or eight years. So in in the early 90s, this property on Codnell Road was built, and they built a garage, that building there. And it is 116 square feet total over the uh, line, which is on uh, town property. They would like to sell the property, but cannot do so until the issue is resolved with the town. So the, the building is, um, is 22 by 24. It's that garage there. And like I said, it's 116. Square feet total over the uh, over the line. When was that constructed? Excuse me. When was that constructed? In the 90s, uh, Ed Callowet, who was the building inspector at the time, signed the permit, gave him the building permit. So it's been through two or three different owners, and they just picked it up when they're getting ready to sell this property, and so it's it's held up based upon that there is there's an encroachment issue based upon. So over on Cardinal, when when that development shut down, there was a there was a parcel of land that the town ended up taking, which is what this piece is located at. So in order to resolve the encroachment issue of 116 square feet, Well, you, you need more than that. Yeah, you gotta have the because you gotta have the setback too. Right, but I'm saying it's a, it's a it's 116 feet Where's over Carmel? over the lot line. Where's Carmel Road? Over off right street across from the high school. Oh, um, gun gun stock and winds. Yep, and then Cardinal. In yep. there. Okay. Yep. And the so if town you go by still owns lot 13. I'm sorry. Town still owns lot 13. Correct. And you said it was five acres. Yes, approximately five acres. It's um, it's it's a wetland. We talked to Rich about it today. It's got a lot of wet property on it. 
So if you go by Gunstock, if you go straight, it turns into Cardinal, that little loop there. So it's where Gunstock and Cardinal meet. It's that piece of land. Mm -hmm. It's wet through there. So you either give them enough land or sell them enough land, whatever, to make the building on it and have them go to ZBA about the setback, or you give them enough to meet the setback too. You have two choices. Well, you have more than that. You have sell or give or setback or no setback. Right. But we do know uh, it's, it's 116 square feet over the over the line onto uh, town property. Give them the land, you can tax it. You? <laughs> We're not in the business. You cannot them. say that in the proximity to Mark. We don't give anything. Maybe, maybe he would like to submit a uh, offer to the town. Proposal. Proposal. Submit. Okay. Is that what the board wants me to advise? What, what do you think? Yeah. Like what purpose is the land okay. serving us? Okay. Well, that's what I'm curious. What does the rest of the piece look like? What is it? You said Oz is wetland? Yeah. It's there's, there's where, that's what the building is. So the back, it's the back corner of the building. Anchors. A preservation So oh, he's, oh, he's over here? That's, the house is over to the left. Maybe you can apply for a preservation easement. So what, there what's... There might be a fire pond down there. I'll which park. side is our land? This side? Yes. Or, or this side? The back side. Back side. Where you were the first time. Over here? Yeah. Well, I'd hope you didn't have it facing on our property. <laughs> no, I was saying, is it on this side uh, or is I it on you. this I side? So I'll have him submit a proposal to the town. Yeah, the driveway's on us. I think we talk to the UBA about something over the driveway to see what they were on to. I would be, I would entertain what he be willing to offer the town, but it would be no cost to the town for surveying or anything. Yeah, so is it, are you looking for the 116 square feet actual, or that plus the 20 foot setback? He, need, he needs all the setback. Or he needs to go to ZBA. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would think to make it clean, you'd want what? setbacks. I'd have to see how many how many feet, how much uh, frontage we have, because this is cardinal here. Yeah, you might want to increase his uh, frontage. Yeah, that, that Well, I, I would say, you, depending on how much uh, the frontage, the lot of the town owns, I mean, you don't want to reduce that well, to the point where it becomes you, unbuildable. Why don't you do this, just come from this point back? 20, 20, yeah. No, no. I'd say from here. Keep this front point. And go straight back like that and get the 20 feet to get the 20 feet well i guess it would depend what the rest of the lot looks like well that's what i'm saying you, we well, don't that way you don't time. change the frontage i wouldn't be concerned about the frontage provided you have ample frontage for to make a conforming lot you have uh you have a it's a it's a large lot from uh, gun stock all the way to this first lot he said it was five acres so I, I guess I'd be curious how we'd have to look to see what the uh, frontages. frontages the town owns on Cardinal Road. Um, he has relatively small frontage. It must be an old lot. Yeah, 94 feet. I, I would say if we have plenty over here and it doesn't adversely impact the property that uh, you come over, uh, how many feet is he over? Let's say, what's he over? Maybe 10? And then you got to so come over setback. 30 feet and go all the way back. Yeah. Or do what, what uh, Rich said. The only thing about that would be time, and if they're really trying to sell it, ZBA would take, you know. Why would you need to go to ZBA? If they didn't try to get the setback. Well, that's what I'm saying. Go for the original, go for the, to have the setback. I would go with the setbacks to make right. it clean and. We had a tax map, we could look it up. Why do we want to go to ZBA if we don't have to? Well, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think they do. Yeah. So I, I would say we need to take a look at the parcel and see what, what the condition of it is, how much frontage we have, and uh, whether
whether it's a viable buildable lot. And then uh, he could entertain making a making an offer to us or a proposal. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, I'll contact him tomorrow. I see this, uh, Jesse Wright. So I contacted him. Okay. Put him, put him back in touch with. Uh, planning board. The planning I see the letter. It didn't, doesn't sound like they were too receptive. He called me and asked for Glenn's phone number, which I gave him, and this is what he came with that. <laughs> he, he was advised that uh, there couldn't be any anything happening on site. Well, he needs to come in with a uh, start fresh with a new site plan, right? Uh, yes, that was my understanding. Okay. Wouldn't want me to call him tomorrow. What do you want? So, do you want to? Do you, do we need to get a hold of? Uh, Jesse and let him know that he there should be no activity taking place on, on the site without him going to the planning board and getting a new site plan approval. Yes, I already I already uh, told him that. And that why that's why he was trying to reach out to Glenn Greenwood. All right. Well, I, I would have thought Glenn would have said that. I mean, instead of Glenn telling him, interesting. Phil, on this. On uh, ECSI, wouldn't wouldn't it be the planning board's position that you can't, if you want to have any activity on that site whatsoever, you need to come back to us with a new site plan? Yeah, I mean they would have to start the process like anyone else does with LN submitting right. escrow accounts and Is it? Okay, so. Can you bring that up to the board, and, and if he makes an inquiry, let let him know that. I, it, it looks sounds like this. It says, uh, you know, he's suggesting that they contact us. Well, he, well, I think he's under under the assumption there's a cease and desist on that property. There, there is a cease and desist for no activity. I've spoken to him. I spoke to him again today, and. Uh, he was advised that that he could he couldn't do anything further on the property that he needed to go to the planning board and that I suggested that he call Glenn Greenwood to talk to him about what the next process well, well, would call Glenn Copeland. He what? It was Glenn Copeland he was contacting. Okay, I told him to contact Glenn Greenwood, and, and that's who he should contact, but uh, or Ellen. Yeah, and, and to start the process with the planning board. But he couldn't do any more, anything else on the land, uh, as as there was no site plan. And he was advised, so he did call. He called Koppelman and not Greenwood, apparently. So, I guess Susan, if you can just forward this to Ellen, okay, and have her contact him to map out his path forward. I have I have his number if they need it. I actually spoke to him about another issue, but it would have to be discussed in a different non-public. Do we want to discuss the uh, this letter in non-public? It's correspondence with our attorney, so it should be discussed in non public. Okay. Anything else? Comment? Well, I get a mo the motion for the minutes, both public and non public. Did we get a second on that? Yeah. I second it. 
excuse me for getting off track. Any any comments or questions on it? Any? All those all those in favor of approving the minutes as corrected, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Sorry about that, Kevin. That's why he's the vice chair. Keep you in line. <laughs> yeah. A full time job. <laughs> make a motion that we go to non-public session to discuss a legal correspondence with our attorney. Before we do that, per your suggestion, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Public comment. we uh, open it up for public comment. Anybody want to speak to the board about anything, address any issues? Okay, hearing none, we got a motion to go into non-public with a second. All those in favor of adjourning to non-public, please signify by saying aye. 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 That'll conclude the televised portion of our meeting. Thank you for watching and have a good night.